Uh, this is Ira. Welcome to the class number five. This class is all about the IQ Designer My Design Center. This is the area on the, some of the baby lock and brother machines that have the digitizer in it. Because we have machines that we have a sewing machine, we have embroidery machine, and also the digitizing part of it. Baby lock calls it IQ Designer, brother calls it My Design Center. This function is available on Destiny, Dream Machine, Solaris, Luminaire, the, uh, the, nil, the new 10 nil machines from Valiant and the PR1050 Air Pro X, and also Stelle, Altair, and Meridian. So several machines uh, with Babylock and Brother product uh, on the line will have this feature. So in here, I'm going to go through to see what does this uh, IQ design or my design center do. Uh, we can cre uh, create and design custom embroidery designs. This is something that uh, normally we had to do on the embroidery software, but we have lots of tools. We have some built-in tools and drawing tools, also shapes that we can use to create our own embroideries right in the machine. We can also scan or import a JPEG line art or color il illustrations, and those can be turned into an embroidery. And then anything we have in there as artwork, uh, we can also apply decorative outlines on them and also fills and stipples. So that's all done in the machine. So no software needed for that one. So that is really amazing. Well, how do we access the IQ Design or My Design Center? I put in here just some of the symbols on the different machines. But as you see, they really are all the, say the same. If it is a baby lock, it's an IQ designer. If it is a brother, it is my design center. And this is just a little section of the home page. So that's one place you can access it. But you can also access it from uh, or the IQ designer and my design center from the embroidery page. So if you have selected the embroidery, there's also a pattern that says either IQ Designer or My Design Center. When you click the IQ Designer or My Design Center pattern, an image like this one appears on your screen. Depending on your machine model, the pictures may be slightly different. So I have images in here from the left coin. Um, this is from the uh, Destiny 2. It is very similar also on the, my, on the Dream Machine too. Uh, only difference on the Dream Machine in here is that instead of having the uh, create line image and create fill image on the horizontal lines, uh, the Dream Machine will have a more square box that will say line and illustration. But those patterns do exactly the same. It's just the, uh, the shape of the patterns and the text on the patterns that is different. The 10 nil uh, embroidery machines that have the My Design Center IQ Designer will have a very similar to this one. It's just a, uh, the ro it's kind of rotated because the hoop is rotated on that machine. So that will be very similar to, to the Dream Machine and Destiny. Uh, the middle one in here shows the image that is for the Stelle, Altair, and Meridian. Very, very similar again to the Destiny and Dream Machine. The coloration was just really changed on the patterns and some of the symbols a little bit. But again, we'll do the same thing. Then the Solaris and Lumine is a little bit different again. Uh, we have some of the things that have been changed. One of the most uh, obvious one in here is that uh, it, all the other machines, we will have a little box around in here, a little preview window when we are zooming in. So that will show you the entire area. And then this little box that will show what we have zoomed in. So these both have this one. The Solaris and Lumine, we do not have that box, but we have a pan. So the pan in here, if we zoom in, we can select a pan and slide it in the screen in here for the look in the different areas. So that's the most obvious one in here comparing on the, on the images. Some buttons are with different places, but they do again exactly the same thing. So no matter which one of those models you have, this presentation will work for you. Well, here's a little bit of a um, close-up in here, some of the patterns, what they do. I only mentioned the Solaris and Lumine that, that we have the zoom and pan patterns in here to review the artwork. So no longer the preview window. So that was the most obvious one in there. Uh, 
Other ops, extra one we have on the Solaris and Luminaire is that we also have redo. We all have undo, but this one also had the redo button. And then on the scan options, so this is a little bit again, it says the buttons are different. So the scan options are all under this one button. So if I go back to the previous slide, all of these scanning options on all the other ones, we had three separate buttons. This one has the little flower, this one has the little leaf, and then we have the align image and the fill image in, in a, as a separate buttons. The Solaris Illumine, it's all under this one button. So when we click this one, another window opens to uh, allow us to select between those three options. And then uh, the, uh, the, uh, the buttons, button in here, we have a memory to save things uh, on the machine's memory. And this is how to retrieve the designs from the machine's memory. So again, if I compare for the other ones, we, uh, on the other ones, we have the saving and retrieving buttons on the bottom, the pocket, arrow going in, arrow going out. On Solaris and Luminaire, our uh, retrieve button is on the top, right corner and the save in the Meccano pocket in is called memory and it is in the in here on the bottom. Okay, so that's the same thing, it's just the location was changed. Um, and no matter which machine we have, we have two groups of you know, tools in here. We have the line tools and the region tools. Uh, on Solaris and Lumine, we just have two extra buttons that will show a little bit more detail on how the uh, what, image, what style is selected. All the other ones, we will see it in here on a little bar, the color of the thread that is being used, and there also the color of the fill or then the style of the fill. On the Solaris and Lumine, it even shows the stitch style on the lines in addition to the color, and it will show the color of the fill, but also the style of the fill. Um, how to change those, we'll go that later on but it is a properties key, which will be this little, uh, look like a little notepad. But we can also access the properties on Solaris and Luminaire by touching this, uh, these buttons. So these two buttons get me in the same spot. And then this one little extra thing we have in uh, Solaris and Luminaire that we can also mirror image the artwork. We can always mirror image later on the embroidery site, the embroidery design, but we can also mirror image the artwork here too. Well, the workspace that we have in there, that represents your largest hoop. So depending on your machine, it can be 9.5 by 14, it can be uh, 8 by 16, it can be, uh, uh, it, let me see, it can be 10 and a 5, 8 by 16, so different sizes, so it was 8 by 14, sorry, and a multi nil. So anyway, whatever is your largest hoop on your machine, that is what that will represent. We can always change the, the, uh, the display to give us guidance. And this is the same changes as we would do also for the embroidery side. So whatever we change on the settings for embroidery, it will show in both places, the embroidery screens, and then also in the uh, My Design Center IQ Designer area. So we can put the grid lines or the hoop sizes. We can select different hoops in there. Again, it doesn't mean that that's the only hoop I can use in there, but it just gives us a guidance. I can still design outside the hoop, but if I wanted to use, in this example, 9.5 by 9.5 hoop, it would not fit into the, a hoop if I go outside the box. So that's all it is. It's just a, a kind of a visual guidance. We can also change the background to have grids, or we can have a little uh, crosshairs, or we can have a plain ones. So all of those options. So that is all done by touching uh, uh, the settings key. And the settings key is in here on the top row on all the machines. Uh, it looks like a, 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 key, a notepad with a piece of paper corner folded over. Uh, the settings, anything we change there will be kept until we change them again. Even if you turn your power on, it won't go back to the factory settings. So this is where we customize our machine. There are several pages for settings. The embroidery pages, depending on the machine, they might be on the page 7 or an 8 and 9. 
or then on some of the uh, other machines they will be on uh, a little bit later on depending on what how many pages we have on our settings but they are part of the embroidery settings so in here what i uh, on here this exercise i wanted to have uh, uh, the uh, the hoop size to be selected to nine and a half by nine and a half just for exercise purpose and then I also really didn't want to have any crits or anything. Just a plain base will be fine. If you have a crit, it doesn't really hurt anything. Um, if your machine shows it in millimeters, like here's an image showing it from the Lumine, uh, uh, where we would um, we will click the button to select the hoop and then click this one to select the, uh, the display. Um, if your machine is showing in millimeters, let's go ahead and change it to inches only because the exercise that I have, it is all done in inches. We can change that anytime we want to. And that will be uh, happening on the next page. So if you are on a page seven on the Destiny and Dream machine, go to the next page and there is a place to change the uh, settings from millimeters to inches. If you are on the Solaris Illumine, then you have, may have to, it might be on page eight already, go to page nine. But those are the two pages we can uh, do the changes for uh, for this exercise. And then just uh, click OK to uh, exit that screen. Uh, on the IQ Design or My Design Center, we are not working on stitches. We'll be working on artwork. And all the pages on all employee designs begin with artwork. If you are a digitizer and been doing digitizing in employee software, that is exactly the same way. We start with artwork that we will turn eventually into stitches. So the, uh, so the same thing in here with the, in our machine. How do we create artwork? Well, on the machines, we have multiple ways to do that. We can use some of the built-in drawing tools, and we can also use some of the uh, 90 built-in shapes that we have in all the machines. We can also scan. The, uh, several machines came with the scanner, uh, Stelle, Altair, and Meridian, we can use the uh, smart device to take on a picture and turn that one into an illustration that can be scanned. Uh, we can also just to take an image of a background. Like if you have a fabric that you want to trace around, you can just use that one as a backdrop on that one. Also, if you have a JPEG picture image, you can all import that directly into the machine. Now, you don't even have to print it out or scan it in. So if it is a JPEG picture, just a little disclaimer. Often I get the question here saying, oh, can I just put the photograph in here? And I said, mm, photographs are really, really hard to digitize. Uh, Baby Lock and Brother, they have the best digitizing software for photographs. Uh, the feature is called PhotoStits Palette and the PE Design. Those software packages do the absolutely best work on turning photographs into stitches. And Beth has an, at the shop an image that I really quickly turned into stitches of her face. So she can show you that one if you have questions about to see how, that's, how would that look like. But no machine, we can't do that one. Uh, because the photographs tend to have millions and millions of pixels and lots of colors. So the poor machine will just say, ah, that's too much information. So we have an amazing, amazing feature in this machine that we can turn JPEG images into uh, embroidery files, but we have to have a little bit of a limitation on the complexity of it. So if the machine says it's too complicated, uh, then you may have to do it in sections. I'm being able to create fairly complicated images in a machine by digitizing it in sections and then combining them all together. So sometimes you can work that way also. But just, and I'll talk later a little bit about the, uh, uh, the images and things that can be used. But just a little disclaimer, because that's the first reaction. Everyone say, oh, I can put my uh, uh, grandsons or granddaughters photograph in a machine and turn into stitches. And I had to say, mm, not so yet. I always have to say yet, because uh, Baby Lock and Brothers seem to be adding more and more features all the time. So maybe maybe one day we can do that, but not at the moment. So stay tuned on that. Uh, the IQ Designer and My Design Center is the area on the ma machines that we can digitize designs. 
we can access the, that area in here either from the home page that's in the my design center where i get onto the area or i can also access it going on the home page and through the employee page and then we have here my design center in a brother and iq designer in a baby lock gets me in the same place what we can do here is we can uh, design the things by just to drawing on the screen so if i skew drawing i'm do using a mouse here obviously i can't draw anything this is meant to be a flower and here's a little leaves so i can draw something in here and turn it into stitches right away um, this work area ref uh, re represents our largest hoop so depending on your machine it can be nine and a half by 14 or the 10 and 5 eighths by 16 um, so if I'm designing something that uh, in here, just have to remember that uh, uh, that area re represents the largest hoop. Sometimes I like to use a little area in here that I can uh, select the frame size. So when I click the settings page, I can select in here all the possible hoops that we have in the, uh, available for the machine. So maybe I want to do something on a 9.5 by 9.5 hoop. And now you say, well, how come my say is not, not 200 by two, uh, 240 by 240? Well, because I have set my machine in millimeters. I can always change it to inches also. So now it would be showing a little grid line here. Sometimes it helps also to select some of the displays for center point or quarter, quarter areas. So even a one inch or three eighths of an inch grid. I will leave it in here blank at the moment. So if I want to make sure that my design will fit onto the 9.5 by 9.5 hoop, that gives me a little framework. I can still do designs in here outside in here, it just wouldn't fit onto that uh, embroidery area. So it's just a visual. Well, one of the options in here in the list to create artwork was using some of the built-in drawing tools. So let's have a look on those ones. So we have the line drawing tools and th those can be specified in, that's in the line properties key. And that key in here, depending again on the machine, it can, uh, it's, there's a group of tools that we have with the pencil. So this is the image in the Destiny and Dream machine and also the 10 needle. And this is the image on the, some of the other ones. So really the same one is just the coloration of the buttons are different. So the button that has a little three lines in here, that is the line properties key. So when I click that one, we get an image that looks like this or like this. So depending again on a the machine, they, they are very, very similar. Do exactly the same thing. It's just the Solaris and Luminaire, we have few extra stitch styles. So what we can select from here on the tools first, see that's the same on all, all the machines. So we can have uh, the, uh, the tool to be a freehand to, uh, drawing tool, either open-ended or closed-end. We can have a straight line tools, open-ended or closed-ended. And we can then also select what stitch style we want to have. And we can even select the color of the stitches. Of course, the machine is color blind. It wouldn't know uh what color to put on it if it tells you to put red and you put green it won't complain about that one but where the color is really handy is visually when designing something but also to add color stops so i use these color chips for that purpose so this is where i will select the styles of the stitches and then uh, styles of the stitches and the tools we're going to be using so on those drawing to tools the top four in there there's a little bit more description in here. We can draw and write freehand lines. This is a great one when you are doing uh, uh, digitizing signatures. Uh, anything you want to have an open end. To draw freehand lines with a closed end, this is a thing that you would like to have the beginning and the end of that line to be connected. Really, really need it when we are filling a, a, an area afterwards. Because if we have an open end, and we try to fill it, the paint just leaks out through the hole. So that will automatically close uh, the beginning and the end in there. It's not very good for signature because it would make my uh, uh, beginning and the end close, and that will make like a 
a straight line across my signature. So not good for signatures, but uh, when we need to have a close tool, close shape, that's when we use this one. The straight lines, well, it's really tough to try to draw a perfectly straight line on a screen. So that is why we have a tools that we can draw straight lines, either the um, just the open ended or the ending things that automatically connect. And I will have later in here on the, uh, on actually in the machine, I was doing a little demonstration, so I will show you how those will work. So in this exercise, I wanted to first you to play with it, just to select that open ended tool on a pencil tool and touch OK. So the pencil tool will be displayed on your uh, group of the line tools. What I mean that if I go one few screens up in here, so that pencil tool will show in here highlighted. It means that that tool is active. So let me scroll down back again. So now when I touch the screen, whether I use my mouse or whether I use my stylus or finger, when I draw on the screen, I could draw a flower. And as a default, that color, if you didn't change it, it will be black, thread, and then also the stitch style will be a zigzag or satin stitch. So we could have picked up the color and the stitch style already on our properties before drawing it. But the cool thing on this machine is that you don't have to make up your mind yet. You can draw it and you can change your mind later. We can edit the colors and the stitch styles. So if you draw your uh, flower or whatever design you uh, draw on the screen, then clip that line properties button again. And that was that little square in here, or Solaris and Luminaire, you can also touch that one in here. Those two buttons will get me in the same spot. And it opens a line properties window and select a red color or whatever other color you'd like to use. And after you select that color, usually how I describe this one is that that color just shows up in here on this line. Or then if it is Solaris and Luminaire, you will see it in here and the style of the stitches shows up on the top. It's just, it's kind of like you just came back from a hardware shop and you have a can of red paint on your trunk of the car. It won't go on the wall on its own. So we will have to apply it. Same with the computer or the sewing machine in here. We'll need to uh, um, uh, uh, highlight our pocket. We have beside the pencil, there's a pocket. We also have another pocket with the region tools. Don't touch that one. We're not there yet. I want to work with the line tools first. So the uh, pocket beside this little pencil. Some instructions, they call it a cup or pocket or beaker, different names, but it looks like a little can. I, I call it more like a paint can. So we will touch that one. And now our paint has been put into the can. So all we had to do go is to just to click somewhere on that line and it will turn in that color. That's how we apply a new color and stitch style. If your stem was connected with the flower, everything will change on that color. If there was a cap in there, even one pixel, only the part that you touch changed. So if there was a cap in here, you would be able to also then uh, have your stems to be a different color than your flower. So just to keep in mind that anything that's connected, the paint will go through that one. That is how you would uh, uh, apply the, uh, the stitch styles and, and uh, thread colors onto an existing shape. Um, uh, on the group in here, I was using the line tools. So that is why I got the line design. I can also add fills where if I want to fill in inside the flower. Um, as a default, the color in here is a black thread and a satin stitch. I can change the color and the type of stitches in here also, just uh, by, by attaching the, uh, the properties key for the line properties and then clicking on the little bucket or can, the paint can in here, and then I will click and it turns red. Because the leaf in here is touching, it also turns red. So I, if I wanted to have my stem to be separate, I would need to have them not touching. Well, let me just clear all of this one. Uh, this was using on the line tools, 
just that uh, tool that uh, creates a straight line or the, or the line that is uh, uh, freehand. If I select the, uh, the uh, properties key, I have options. I can have the, op uh, the freehand with an open end or freehand with a closed end. I can also do straight lines on the open end and connect it. Well, what is the difference between the first two? Well, the open end in here is a crate if I want to do my signature. Uh, because whenever I finish drawing in here, my design stops. If I select the uh, freehand with the closed end, and if I do my signature now, see, I have a little red line following me all the time in here. And when minute I stop, it will connect my pick into the end. Obviously not a very good choice for the uh, signature, but it's a great choice if I want to have my uh, start and end finishing on a circle. Let me undo some of these. I can undo one at a time or all clear to clear everything. Um, so after you have done some artwork, you often would like to most likely save the artwork. And save is a really good idea when you uh, to save, save, save many times while you work on a especially a complicated project. Because sometimes you may do things and you go, ah, I went too far or I, I would have to start all over again. Well, if you had saved some of this uh, uh, me intermediate work, you don't have to go so far back. So I like to save a lot of times. And the save in here is a little bit different than on your computer. It is more like save as, meaning it will save a new copy every time you save. So, it, uh, so in the end, you might have a lot of copies on uh, different sections of your work. You can always delete anything you saved. So don't worry about saving extra things because you can always go and delete the ones you don't need anymore. So it's a good idea to save artwork. How to save it? We will put it into the pocket, in the memory pocket. And I have the images in here, all the different machines. So some of the ones we have a little pocket with the red arrow or green, uh, blue arrow going in it. Solaris and Lumine so says memory. And when you click, any one of those, on other window opens. Because now it's asking, where do you want to save it? Any, every machine, I can save it in the machine's memory. We have a little memory pocket in there. And note that these artwork files, they are not embroidery stitch files yet. So they are not PES files or PHS files or PHC files or whatever. They, are not, they don't have any stitch file extension. The extension is either PM9 or PM8. PM8s are for the multi needles. All others, they save it as a PM9 format. It's a special secret code for the machine. Only this machine understands that code. So if I had saved this artwork on my memory stick, and I put that memory stick on my computer, and I wanted to open that art file, your computer will just say there is no application to open that one. I don't understand that language. This is hipperish gibberish. It's kind of like me speaking in here sometimes. I, I'm sure you'll think the same thing. I can't understand her. So sorry about that. Um, so anyway, so the, this format is a special artwork file format that only the machine understands. And uh, I have the 10 needle machine and I have a Lumine. Um, my 10 needle saves it as a PM8 format. My Lumine saves it a PM9 format. I can't interchange those ones. Why? Well, my 10 needle has a different hoop size. It is 8 by 14. And my Lumine has this humongous big hoop, so its format is different. So I can't mix and match my, uh, uh, my files. I can mix and match my embroidery the stitch files, but I can't do that one with, with my art files. So just keep in mind that, because that is a question I often get. I try to open it and it doesn't open. I said, nope, computer doesn't have anything to open it. Not yet, at least. So we can, we can save it on your machine's memory. You can save it on a USB stick. We can have two ports. If you are using mouse, your mouse would be here. So then you have one port to put your USB stick. You can also save them on uh, the, the SD cards and then on some of the machines. I put only in the Destiny and Dream machine. However, this capability is also on the 10 needles. So I should really edit that one. 
so those ones we also have a direct connection to computer that you could save it. Well, if I save it on these external memories, notice it in here, uh, it says files will be saved in the B pocket. Um, when you save a first time on a new memory stick, if there wasn't already a B pocket folder, the machine will create one and then everything will be saved onto that folder. So when you are retrieving from the memory stick and you click the memory stick to retrieve, then you go, oh no, it's not there. No, you had to click the B pocket folder because it keeps everything on that same folder, all of this artwork. Same as if you save an embroidery design from the machine. In the, in the memory stick, it will put them into a B pocket folder. And then to retrieve the artwork you saved, you will need to touch the a pocket, a pocket, a little, a little po pocket that has an arrow coming out. So this is the image how it would look like in the Dream Machine and Destiny and the Ten Little. And then this is the image how it would look like on the other machines. Really the same symbol, just the colorations was a little bit different. So again, when you click this one, then the machine will ask where did you want to retrieve it? And you'll get these same options as when you were saving. So wherever you saved it, that's where you can retrieve it. But this is artwork. It's not stitch files in here when we are working on the My Design Center uh, IQ Designer area. Well, let's see what other tools we have for line drawing. The, uh, the first one we used was the, just the freehand tool. But let's try the straight line tool. So just to clear all the screen in here, we have a couple options. We could do undo, that will do the uh, undo the last option that we did, or last action. Or if we click all clear, that will completely clear the workspace. And when you touch all clear, that you'll get the prompt asking, are you sure you want to do that? Just touch OK. That makes sure that we have completely clean page in here, no, no other little extra lines or dots in there that we didn't intend to have. So now uh, select the uh, line on the line properties. Remember that was that on the beside the pencil, there was this uh, on that group of uh, buttons, the thing that looked like a little bit of a three lines in a piece of paper. Click that one, the line property tool that opens the line property menu and select the straight line tool. That is um, the third one in the list in there. And you can select the color if you want and then touch OK in the bottom of the screen. And then use your stylus finger or mouse on the, on the screen and draw straight lines on the workspace. So how this straight line tool works is when you hold down your finger or mouse or stylus and keep it on the screen and then just to draw a line. I can change the angle of it and the length of it. Minute I stop, it will set it. So you can do the start and the end and the angle just kind of all at one time. Then when I click again on the screen, it will set my beginning point. And when I draw a line, it's a perfect line. And then when I uh, un un untouch and don't touch the screen anymore, it will set it. So draw a few lines in here. If you don't like one of those lines, Remember, you can touch the undo button and it will remove the last action. So in here, in this case, I have five lines. So if I do undo, uh, the last one I did disappeared, then that would be another undo, undo, the order I did those ones. If you accidentally uh, undid one too many, the Solaris and Lumine, we also have a redo, which is the arrow going the other, uh, other way. So redo and undo. But that's only uh, the redo is only on the Solaris and Lumine. So that was how the straight line tool works when it is open ended straight lines. Now let's see the straight line connected tool. That is a little bit different. Again, let's just start on a blank page. That's all clear to completely clear the workspace, and then that's OK after the prompt. Then open the line property menu again and select the straight line connect tool, which is the very last one on that list of those four tools and touch OK. So this one works different. So instead of me holding down like I did with the straight line tool and releasing my finger or mouse or uh, stylus, this one I would just click the points. Like in here on this star, I would click this part, I would click this part, 
then this each of the corners. And anytime I click, it will connect the line between those points. This is a great tool for tracing the design. So I can go around and around a pattern that I scanned and I can click around and it says to have them all connected. Then when I'm finished, I want to connect them all together. If I click close to where my starting was, it'll automatically connect them all together. So that's the connected line tool in here. So it just works a little bit different than the, just the open ended straight line tool. Then the next tool I have here on the line tools is a straight line tool. This works a little bit different. Now when I hold my stylus down, I can uh, change the length and the angle on the straight line. The minute I lift my mouse up or my finger off the screen, it sets it. So I can do the sun rays in here easily just by drawing straight lines this way. Um, let me, un oh, I'm not going to leave that there. I'm going to go and pick up the next tool that allows me to do a connecting line tools. Well, this works a little bit different. Um, instead of me uh, clicking and holding it down, all I have to do is click and click another one, one more, one more in here. So I can just click the corners and anything I, when, when I click, it will connect to the next one. I'm trying to do a star. Obviously, it doesn't look like a star. Let me undo that. Look in here, and then I'm up. Oh, maybe I'll get a little star. When I click back to the box in here, it will connect that to start and the end. So now I have a connected lines in here. So those are the uh, four different uh, drawing tools that we have in the uh, in in the My Design Center IQ Designer area. On the lines, we can have them to be different styles. The default is a satin stitch. I could have it a double run, bean stitch, which is a, like a triple straight stitch in a sewing machine side. Then we can do a candle wicking stitch and also a chain stitch. Then if you have the luminaire or solaris, we also have a, a blanket stitch, a V stitch, plus additional 10 decorative stitches. You can also select from uh, uh, different colors in here of course, the machine is color blind, so uh, the color really is a way to put a color stop for your embroidery or just to visually have different colors. So whatever I had left in here last, what I selected shows up on the Solaris and Lumine also on the top. So now next line, what I would do, which is still the same tool I have in here, still would look like a straight line here because we haven't told it yet what kind of a, a size of the stitches we want to have. So this is why it just shows the line at the moment. Um, and later on, if I wanted to turn this one into stitches, I can then tell the size and the, uh, more, more detail. Well, I'm going to clear this all here and start the brand, brand new page. Well, I can't really draw anything on a piece of paper and especially not on a screen. So what I like to use are some of the built-in shapes and stamps. The manual refers them as stamps. It's an instruction and reference guide. We we'll refer to shapes as stamps. Uh, they are just uh, shapes that have been built in the machine. And we have 90 shapes in there on most machines. The original Destiny and Dream Machine, they only had 30 shapes. But then the Dream Machine 2, Destiny 2, and so on, all the newest machines, we have 90 shapes. Well, if you still have the original Destiny and Dream Machine, you can upgrade it there to get you know, the Dream Machine 2 and Destiny 2 and have all those additional shapes plus lots of other tools. So how do we access those ones? Again, you may want to click the all clear in here if you have still something on the screen uh, to have a blank screen again to start with. Um, we had a group of tools in here that we had the line tools we've been working. I'm going to skip the region tools at the moment. I'm going to go some of the other tools in here. And one of those ones on the buttons in here in the middle of the screen uh, is a circle and a square. Again, it's the same symbol in all machines. The colorations are just different on some of the ones. That will open up a, a set of uh, 30 basic shapes. And here's how they would look like. 
that is an image taken from the Dream Machine and Destiny. That is an image taken from Solaris and Luminaire, actually from the manual, because I had a little bit description of what all those patterns do. Well, this will give us basic 30 shapes in here. That's what we had originally when the Dream Machine and Destiny came out. In addition, we have buttons on the top that will allow us to go onto other areas. Again, they are the same buttons on all the machines. The symbols may have just changed a little bit. So we have the stamp shapes, and then we have also the number three in here, the shaped outlines. I will talk about this later, so don't worry about that yet. Also, the frame embroidery areas, I'll talk about that later. We're going to first concentrate on these first three tabs in here, but leave it still selected on this first tab. Because this only this group in here, the first 30 shapes, we have an extra box of three patterns in here. And what these ones are, these are the stamp types. So I can have these first 30 shapes already selected as just the outline, which is the default, or I can have it just as a fill, or I can have the fill and the outline. Well, why would I use different? Well, if I only know, I don't want it to have a my machine to show a straight stitch or zigzag or some line around it, I can select this one. However, we do have an option later on, we can always turn off the stitching altogether. So we wouldn't even stitch it, even if you had started with the one with the outline. And then this one in here would have both. So I really have an option to change my mind. I can have an outline to be filled. I can have my uh, uh, taken my outline off if I need it. But there's al already keys that I can select if I already know what that, that I'm going to be doing one of those options. Most times I start with this one as a default and then I, I can add my fills and change my styles if I need. So this one allows me to check on the first 30 shapes. If I click the next button that looks kind of like a flag, that will give me 30 more shapes. These are all closed shapes. Lots of pretty flowers and hearts in here. And again, then if I click one more time, then I will get more open shapes. You can even see the description, open shapes and closed shapes. So we have, those are the 90 shape, uh, built-in shapes that we can use. Yes, some of these open, open, open shapes have areas that are filled in also, or the closed shapes also. But they call open because, like this clover leaf in here, that stem is separated, so I can have the stem to be a different type of style. So those are all the built-in shapes we have. And here's a short description of all of those ones. We can create the artwork from the shape that will be outlined and stitched only. We can create outline, uh, outline from the shape that will be filled with the stitching, not having outline. And then the one, the one with both. So these three are only available on the first 30 basic shapes. Then we have the additional 30 closed shapes and 30 open shapes. The last two in here, the outline and the embroidery frame, I will describe this a little bit more detail later. So now we have also lots of editing tools in the machine. So in addition for creating things, we can then resize them, we can cut them, we can copy them, we can rotate them. But and in order to do some of that editing, that item has to be selected. Because the machine, uh, it's pretty, really, pretty really clever, but it still can't read our mind. And it doesn't take voice commands. So we have to somehow tell the machine what are we wanting to edit. So how we tell it, we have to select that item. And the selection, it is this little box that this is on a dream machine and a destiny and pretty much also on the 10 needle machines, it's underneath the eraser button. So Lars and Lumine, that selection key is on the bottom row. It's just kind of a different location, but that's exactly the same thing. It's just a symbol that has a box with the dotted line. And when I select that one, um, now I can draw a box around. So Lars and Lumine will give us more options. Um, if you don't have the upgrade, kit one, you'll have two options for selecting. If you have the upgrade kit one for your Solaris and Lumine, you get three more options how to use the selection key. 
but the default on it is the same as all the other machines we have the option which is the drawing a box around which i mean drawing a box you click your uh, cursor if i kind of use as a screen in here i will click my cursor and i would oops i can't do that one in here but if i would draw a box like this one so just kind of a draw with your pencil or mouse or stylus you can draw a box around it and minute you release it uh, it will be selected it will the machine will be select or the artwork will be selected just whatever is inside the box so if you missed part of it that won't get be that won't be selected and can't be edited so just make sure that if you want to uh, select every piece of on your artwork draw the box around the entire area after it's been selected then we will have the options available because if nothing selected meaning there's no red box around an item we can't copy we can't paste we can resize we can't do any of those they're all grayed out but whenever we have it, uh, anything selected the red box around we can cut it we can size it rotate it copy and also clipboard those options will be available here's an image that shows when nothing was selected how how they are grayed out Sometimes we don't want to delete big area, which delete really is our CISO key in here. So that will clip it, that's the same as delete. And so anything that was selected would get thrown in the trash. Sometimes we may only delete a little bit. So in that case, what I would want to uh, 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 use is a little eraser, which is this uh, looking look like a little eraser. Again, different machine, different coloration, same symbol. So when you click this one, the machine will ask, hmm, do you want to have a square eraser or circle eraser? Circle and a mid size is the default. So if I want to do a very precise, I may select a smaller one. The Dream Machine, Destiny, Stella, Luminaire, so sorry, not Luminaire, Stella, Altair, and Meridian, and the Multinil, they have a total of six options, three on different sizes and two styles. So Lars and Luminaire, we can have the two styles and then the size is more of a sliding scale i can even go by one pixel screen in here so it's a green pixel in there very very precise editing also erasing so that will just set the size and the shape of your eraser so then all you'd have to do is just to touch your screen and erase the area of you don't you don't want really really great tool And here's the summary of all those tools in here, what they can do. So we have uh, the selection key, and then we can touch the size to increase or decrease the size. We can uh, also use these little arrows that we can precise position the objects there also. Uh, we can now uh, do a copy. Oops, I sorry, I went on the wrong screen. We can uh, create a it's a really duplicate, it's copy and paste all at one place. But it also place, places a copy on a clipboard when you touch it, touch it. So I can uh, then, just to touch the clipboard, the paste what was copied in there. Uh, scissors will cut it, which is really kind of like a delete. And rotate, obviously rotates it. And then we have one extra tool on Solaris Lumine. We will have the mirror image also. So that's a little extra one. If I wanted to design in here a, a little um, little pattern, obviously I could uh, draw it if I was good drawing, but you already seen I can't draw anything. So we have also in here built-in shapes. Manual calls it stamps. But here are, when I click it, we have 30 basic shapes. We have 30 uh, prettier ones, kind of a, uh, these are all closed line shapes, and another 30 open shapes. So a total of 90 built-in shapes. We have a couple other patterns that I will talk about those later. If I go back onto the basic shapes. Coming up to you, um, This one in here, uh, I could select uh, all that. Uh, I would only have an outline. I could have just the fill, or I could have the fill and the outline. Does it matter what I select? Not really, because I can always fill a, a, a close line and I can also uh, make this line up to be non-stitch. So really doesn't matter, but if I wanted to, I could pre uh, select that ahead of time also. So when you select that, uh, that shape, touch OK, it will appear on your workspace. And 
all of these shapes, when we apply them, they will uh, come on your screen selected. So the red box is already around it. If you click somewhere else on that workspace, that red box disappears and then you don't have anything selected and we can't resize it. If you did that one, click the undo button, it should get selected again. We need to have the red box around it. Uh, then after well, you have make sure that you have the red box on it, touch the size button and an image like this appears. And we will see the size in there. It, on, it will show to be about almost six and a half inches diameter. Hold down the proportional uh, uh, size for re reducing the size and make this approximately three inches. Don't have to be precise. We're not going to show this out. It's just an exercise. But just hold it down until we get approximately three inch size in there. Um, in this same page, we do have arrows that we can also position this one precisely. I can always move it around in here by just putting my cursor or my finger over that and dragging in a different position. Do not move it. If you accidentally moved it, click that little center button to put it back in the middle. We want to have everything in the middle this, in this exercise. So after you got your size correct, then that's OK. And it will be set on a, it will be set on a screen on that size. So next thing I'd want to do a copy, and a copy was that pattern that we have the uh, either two flowers or on the Solaris Lumine and Stelle Alte Meridian, uh, two uh, the two little squares. So we're gonna touch that pattern to make a copy. It really is duplicate. It will place a copy of that three inch uh, uh, star. I call it a star. It's kind of a jacket star. And it will copy and paste. It's slightly off centered because if it's put it right on top of it, we wouldn't really know that we made a copy. That's why they offset it a little bit. So we should now have two of them, and the last one is still selected. So that's the size pattern again. And click that center button so that we center it right on top of each other. And then make it a bit larger. So this time, going to be using the proportionally enlarging pattern until we get the size about four inches. So that is the image we should have. It doesn't matter if you resize it first and then center or center and resize. It doesn't matter which order you do it. But I just want to make sure you do both four inches and center, click OK. So now that we touch that button in here, the, the copy button, it also Highlight it as an other pattern in here that is a you know, clipboard. So the minute we put our first item onto the copy, it play, pays a copy in a clipboard. So I have now two options. I could either touch the clipboard and will paste another three inch circle on, a, on my workspace. If I click the copy button, which is kind of hidden in here at the moment on this display, if I click this one, it'll make a copy of the one it has selected, which was the larger one. This exercise was using the, uh, um, the paste button or the uh, clipboard button. Really, it doesn't matter which one you use. So just click that once and then touch the size button. Make this size to be five inches and also center it. We want to make sure we uh, center it and then we will resize it. That's OK. Then paste one more, that's the size, and center it. Enlarge it to six inches, and OK. And one more time, paste it, that's the size, and center, and enlarge the shape to be seven inches, and OK. So we should have in the in a end five sizes that are in a gradu uh, right, right, five shapes that are in a graduation sizes. So now we worked hard on it. So as I mentioned earlier, good idea to save, save, save. So let's click the save button in here. Again, some machines will have a pocket, a pocket, pocket, <laughs> that has a red arrow going in it, or just an arrow going in. Solaris and Luminaire says memory. So we will touch that one. And then select where you want to save it, either your machine's memory, or if you have a memory stick uh, selected, then, uh, then click that one. 
after we got all our five shapes in there, very often you have an intention to uh, on the uh, uh, you want to go and touch the next button in the corner. Don't do it yet. If you did it, just hit the return to come back on this page because we need to do a little bit more editing. We at the moment we have all the lines in here, whatever was last left on our properties tool. I don't want all of them to be same. I'd like to have five different styles. So even if we had done this work already, we can still assign those ones later. We didn't have to select the head time. So how we do that one, how we gonna change things? We gonna go to line properties, which again on this line, group of line tools, it's the one with the three lines in a piece of paper. Click that one and the line properties will open. Select a candle wicking stitch and change to some other color. Doesn't matter what color. Only thing I would advise, don't use some of those really, really light colors. They're hard to see on a screen. Just put some bright ones like blue or red or some really, something other than black. And then touch OK. So whenever you have selected the color, it will show up in here and as a style. The color will show in all machines in here. And the Lumine and Solaris will also show above in there the stitch style. We should have the candle wicking stitch. Then we need to put this color because we will have the pencil selected. Well, we don't want to start drawing on the screen. If you accidentally touch the screen and you were doing lines in here, click your undo button for that one. We don't want to draw now more. We want to apply the new style to an existing line. So we need to touch the bucket. Again, have to remember, we came back from the hardware shop with the red paint in the car. We need to put it into the uh, bucket. And that was the touch the bucket. And then we're gonna touch the outer line on that, uh, that design. So in here, I would touch the most out uh, line in here. And it should turn on that color. So that's, just, that's the reason I want to change the different color that I had before, because then I see what happens because it still shows as a line. You won't see the candle begin symbols yet because we haven't told the machine yet what size we want. So that is why you all you still see is just the color changing. If you're not sure, you touch it again. And if you have your volume on your machine, it will kind of be pop knock, gonna say we've done it already. We don't need to do it twice. So after we've done this uh, first one, go ahead and touch the line properties again. And then, select the change stitch and touch an, an another color and touch OK. And then apply that color for the next line. And continue this way, going back, back and forth. Touch the uh, line properties, pick up the next stitch style or the straight stitch, put it in a uh, bucket, apply the next line. And then finally, I uh, will do the pin stitch and the satin stitch. So we have the five stitch styles that every machine has applied in there. So now that we have done all that work, and if you want it, you could save now it also. The one that we saved earlier in, in on this one was all of the ones, all the lines with the same stitch style. If I now save another copy, it'll have our new stitch styles also. Again, if you want, you can save it. You don't have to at the moment. But if this was a real project, I most likely would do that because if I had to go and edit something, I can pick up which stage I want to continue editing. So after we've done all of that, we're all happy. Now I'm gonna let you touch the next button. Depending on the machine, if it is a dream machine and destiny, the Altair, Stelel, La Meridian, and the Multi-Needle, you still won't really see um, the actual stitches on it. Those machines, we have one more pattern that says preview. So if you want to have a look, how would that look like? You need to touch the preview and wait it to digitize the design. And don't touch the set yet. Please don't do that. Just we will go there later. But if you want to see how it looks like, you can do that. If you have a Solaris or Lumine, that preview window was taken away and it will already right away digitize those stitches and will show them on your screen in there on after you touch the next. So that's the only difference between the machines. Well, this, if you had touched the preview, then touch the, retu uh, that, uh, touch the uh, return so that we are back on this page that your preview button is shown here. Um, and then on um, 
Solaris and Lumine, you, you already were in the right spot. So now we can adjust the sizes on all of these stitches. We have lots of options. The one in here is selected at the moment is the uh, uh, candle within stitch. If it wasn't, you can use the arrow keys in here or even click on the screen in here to select that stitching. And when it is selected, you'll see the stitch style and then also the properties. Again, Luminaire and Solaris, these patterns will be displayed in here on the side. Do the same thing, it's just the location, the patterns are different. So what we can do in here is I can change uh, this uh, the candle begin stitch style and I'll go to the next screen. Um, I can change the size of my candle begin stitches. The range is between 3 and 10 millimeters. And you go, hmm, mine is in inches. Well, because we had set the machine in inches. So whenever we tell an embroidery site to be in, the units to be in inches, everything is in inches. So if you wanted to see this in millimeters, which sometimes it's a little bit more easy to visualize because the sewing machine is in, in millimeters always. So you can change that with one of the settings, which was, um, I'll go back, uh, that to, on the top row, that, that row of buttons always stays there. So you can click the, uh, the settings key and then uh, select the page for the units to change it from inches to millimeters if you want it. So in here, this machine was changed to millimeters. So when I click the size button, I have an option to change the sizes between three and 10 millimeters. So you can play the size if you want. And then on, in here you touch set, Solaris and Luminaire, you touch okay. Then you can also change the distance, the spacing. As a default, there's a one millimeter spacing. You can make it further, uh, larger or closer. So we can go even 0.1 millimeters when they're almost touching all the way to 10 millimeters apart, which is about on, uh, 3 eighths of an inch. So those are the options for what I, what I can do for my sizing. If I don't want to change it or uh, apply those changes, I can hit cancel. If I want, I can just apply a, a touch set or OK, depending on the machine. Then go ahead and touch that um, the those arrow keys or touch on the screen to select the next line. And we should have the candle, uh, the, 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 sorry, the change, change stitches and now selected. The change stitches, we have again two parameters to change. We can change the sizing. They can be anything from three to five millimeters. And we can also change the repetition, how dense we want these change, change stitches to be. And we can have them anywhere from two to six. Just a little tip is that if you make the size really, really tiny, you may not want to have five or six time repetition because all you would have is a lump of thread. So if you have a larger stitch, yeah, you may want to repeat multiple times. I have used this often as a three millimeters and then I put my repetition to either two or three. So just kind of on the look on the stitches, how they would look when they sewn. Then if I use again the selection key, to go to the next one, we will get the straight stitches. And when I click that the parameter for changing that one, it will actually not show, oh, my little button is in the wrong spot. Uh, it will show it in here as run pitch instead of a stitch length. Well, in commercial embroidery, they don't call it a stitch length, like we are more used to on the sewing machine side on the straight stitches. So it's just, a, it's a, they're called the run pitch. It's the distance between the needle penetrations on our fabric. The default is, again, it's two millimeters. I can go anywhere from one to 10 millimeters. I can change that if I want to. And then we have, again, if I touch the selection key to get to the next one, that will be then the, um, probably the zigzag stitch. So if it is the uh, pin stitch, the pin stitch, we have the same settings as we have with the uh, straight stitching. But the zigzags, we will have then different settings. Zigzag, we will have uh, the, uh, the uh, width of the zigzag and the density. So the width, I can change from anywhere from one to six millimeters and the density from 90% to 110. That's our range on that. Why would I change the density? Well, the 100% will give us a perfect fill 
with your normal 40 weight embroidery threads. But if I'm using heavier 30 weight embroidery threads, I may want to take some of the stitches out and change the density to 90%. If I use really thin, like a 60 weight thread, I may want to add more stitches. So I would change the density to 110. So that's just a little option in here for also. And that was my last was in here, the, uh, the pin stitch, which is the same settings as for the uh, straight stitch. So that is how we can apply all our stitch sizes. So after we apply the stitch sizes, then we can, we can digitize and see what they would look like. Uh, on the Solaris and Lumine, you will always see those already when, when you click OK. On the other machines, we would have to touch the preview and OK to see that one. So others, if you want to do that. Well, I have a couple slides in here on some of the extra stitches that we have on the Solaris and Lumine. Because we also have a blanket stitch and a V-stitch. And on those ones, we can change the stitch width and the thickness. So those are options when we have those ones selected. And also, if it is a blanket stitch, so here you can kind of see the stitch width and the thickness being changed. But also on that one, we, can, we, we also have a flip feature. And we have a repetition too. But the flip allows me to change whether I have these blanket stitches to go in, into the design or out to the design. So if I want to spiky one or in the way. So that if I click this one, I can select that. Again, that is only some solar, Solaris and Lumine. So that will be kind of showing those options. So all the machines, whenever we have finished our uh, uh, designing it after, uh, on the uh, Destiny, Dream Machine, uh, Stelle, Alte, Meridian, and the Ten Nil. Uh, you, you need to touch a preview, and it will say, are you sure you want to save it? You could have saved it in here also with these settings if you want it. That's okay also. But if you don't need to want to change, just that's okay. And then we're all on the same page. We have the design that looks like it's been digitized, and we have a set in the bottom in here. So then we're going to touch the set. And this is our last point of return. So it'll give you a warning that your design center will be exited and you, uh, you are going to be going into embroidery edit screen. I kind of refer this one as when we're working on uh, embroidery artwork, we are working with the dough. We're making a cake. I can make the dough into a cake, but I can't make the cake back into a dough. So this is really my last point of return. Whenever it say, gives you that warning, minute you touch OK in there, it, your cake is baked. It is, uh, we can't make it back into uh, a artwork again, not back into a dough. So that's why there's a warning. It's kind of saying, are you sure you've done all your editing? That is why it is really good idea to keep saving, saving, saving memory or that little uh, pocket in here. Because that way, if you accidentally just kept hitting OK, OK, OK in there, then you realize, oh no, I'm already stitches. Then you can't go back. But if we had saved a copy of it, it's kind of like we get to start the dough in our, uh, our uh, freezer for that one. So just a reminder that kind of before it's just hitting OK always, just read what it is telling you. But now that we're all happy with our design, that's OK and it will be then turned into an embroidery design. And it will be shown on your embroidery page. And uh, um, it has, we can still do all the same edits as we can do with any embroidery design. So it didn't matter where the design came, we have still the same edits. Cool. Um, I'm going to do a little exercise in here just to show some of the features we have using the line tools. Um, because I can't really draw anything, I'm going to go in here and pick up a design from the stamps collection. And here is a little shape that I'd like to use. So when I click OK, it gets selected in here, uh, set on my workspace, and it is selected. So because it's selected, I can edit it. I'd like to resize this one. So I click the size button, and it will show me that that is almost six and a half inches diameter. I can size it proportionally or stretch it out 
resets takes me at, at a normal uh, original post, uh, size. So if I hold down this pattern in here, I can just uh, make it go in smaller. I'd like to do this approximately uh, three inches, so that could be close enough. I can also move it in here, or I can move it in the screen. But I really want to keep it centered, so I will click the center button to make sure I'm centered. And I will click OK. It is still selected, so I'd like to do another one. This one button is not available at the moment, but see, when I click the copy and paste, it really is a duplicate. So I, cut the, I click this one. Now this one is available also. This is a clipboard. So any uh, anytime when I copy, copy paste here, it puts a, co a copy of that on a clipboard. So I can paste another one that's clip in here. Well, I'd like this next one to be four inches. So I'm going to start size and make it a little bit larger. I could have also added the, uh, the six and a half inch and gone down, but this is uh, a little bit quicker doing this way. So approximately four inches. It was offset a little bit from the center so that we knew that there was another copy. So I'm gonna click the dot in here to center it also in the middle of my workspace. And I click OK to close the window. Now I'd like to add one more. I have two options. I could uh, do another copy paste on this last one, or I can clip in here on the clipboard and we'll put a copy of the previous, the one that we had uh, copied in there earlier. I'm going to go to size and I will make this one now to be five inches. Again, approximately. I'm not going to sew this out, so it's just an exercise. So it's close enough in there. And I center it also. And OK. Well, I'm going to do a couple more. So this time again, I could mark, uh, duplicate the last one or I could uh, paste from the clipboard the original. I think I'm going to duplicate the last one. And I'm going to make this one to be five inches. Sorry, I need to make it to six inches because mine was a little bit less than five earlier. I wanted approximately one inch differences. Again, I don't have to be exact, that's close enough. And still I had to remember center it also. Then OK. And one more. Again, I could uh, clipboard or I can make another copy paste. And I'm going to make this approximately seven inches. So here we go. Close enough. Center and OK. All of these ones in here are at the moment black satin stitches. Um, I can change my mind. I can decide all of these to be different ones. So I can go on the uh, properties, which in the Luminae and Solaris, I can get to line properties by touching the uh, little uh, notepad in here, or the symbol what shows my stitch. Takes me in the same place. I would like to have the center one to be a satin stitch. So I'm going to uh, change the color for it also, so I can see that I'm actually doing it. I have my pencil selected, but I need to use the pocket so I can pour my paint onto that center and it turned into a little purple color. Then I'll go back onto the line properties and I will pick up a straight stitch. So it really is a double run. I'll pick a red color this time. OK. My pocket is selected and I will click one more time. Reason I changed the color is that then I really see that I have done it. If I'm not sure, if I click again, if I have a volume or, oops, I actually selected the next one. Let me go back. If I select the same one again, it kind of peeps on me here a little bit if I did this, if I reselect the same one. Well, I'm, I'm clicking on here uh, on the an angle, so, so I'm, I'm going to get the new ones. Uh, well, I'm going to go again on the line properties, uh, pick up the, uh, the pin stitch. Maybe I'll do green color this time. My bucket is selected and I'm going to click now that one. And then I will do it a couple more times. Uh, a um, candle begin stitch. Maybe I'll do that one kind of a brownish color here. The bucket is selected and I will do the next one. And one more, we have a chain stitch. Of course, we have a couple others in here on the uh, Lumine and Solaris also. And maybe I'll do a blue this time and do the very last one. Well, still, you didn't see any changes on the stitch styles in here, just the color that's showing that I did change them. 
Um, so this time I'm I'm finished this design. So I'm gonna use this later. So I don't have to recreate it. So I'm gonna save it. Anything I save in here, these ones are not in Brory files. These are art files. And what art files means is uh, these are not stitches. These are just images. So if I save something in here on uh, on here, it's not gonna uh, appear in the embroidery side. This is gonna be, uh, it's like a dough when you make a cake. I can make the dough into a cake, but I can't make a cake into a dough. So I'm gonna click memory. I can save on my machine's memory. I can save in a memory sticks or even a SD card if I have one connected. I will just save it on my machine's memory. Now that I have it safely put in there, and I'm finished my designing on the workspace, I'm gonna go next. This will in here show me how the design will look like. It takes a little while the machine to digitize it. Again, we are still kind of in the editing places in here. If you have a, a multi-nilo machine or a dream machine, a destiny, or the Stelle or Alte or Meridian, those ones, you won't see this one yet but you'll have a button that says preview. And then if you click that one, then it allows you to see how it will look like. Solaris and Lumine, it'll out, uh, kind of, they take that step out of the way. So this is where I can now change the sizes of each of these uh, th stitches. Um, I could pick up a uh, the, uh, uh, this um, chain stitch and it will show me the size. Because I changed my machine on inches, everything is in inches. Well, for me, it's much easier to understand the stitch sizes in millimeters. So anytime I can go on the settings, and if I go on to the second page in here on the embroidery settings, I can change it in millimeters, and now it is in millimeters. So I can make this um, uh, quite a bit smaller, three millimeters, or I can make it quite a bit larger. So anytime I change it from the default settings, the background changes in here. If I click OK, on here I have to wait, um, Destiny and uh, Rim machines, uh, those other machines, uh, you won't see it in here until you click the preview button. So on this stitch, I can change the size. I can also change the repeat, how many times it will go back and forth. If I make this stitch very, very small, you may want, not want to have it to go over five times because it's going to be really, really dense. But this was fairly large, so I can even go six times if I want it. Or I can go down to two. So I can say just thickness on that also. It doesn't really change too much in here on the look, but if I embroider it, it will be definitely different. After this finishes digitizing here, then these arrows let me choose the um, next ones in here. I can go either uh, uh, forward or backwards. Well, this time I got my uh, a candle wicking stitch. The candle wicking, I can also change the size of the candle wicking, or I can change it uh, the distance between uh, uh, those candle wicking dots. This time I'm just going to leave them as they are. If I go to the next one, this one in here is the uh, chain stitch. Default is two millimeters. I, I, I normally find this one to be too short for a uh, bean stitch. So I'm going to make this one two and a half millimeters. Sometimes I make it three and then OK. Again, really doesn't change too much on here, but in Brody it will look different. It, they don't call it stitch length in here because they use the commercial in Brody terms, which is uh, uh, run pitch. So it's a kind of a little bit different term. The same thing in here with the uh, straight stitch. Again, I can change the stitch length, which they call run pitch. And the very last one would be our uh, satin stitching. I can change the size of the satin stitch, and I can change also the density. Most times the 100% is just perfect for the 40 weight embroidery threads. But if I'm using thicker, like 30 weight embroidery threads, I may want to reduce the density uh, to 90%. Or if I'm using 60. So now that I have edited the sizes I want to have, I, I'll be ready to set this one. I still have an option to save this one. If I now save it, it will save me also the settings that I had for each stitch style. 
uh, if you have uh, other than the Solaris or Lumine, any of the other ones, you would see a button that says uh, preview. You will click preview and then OK, and then it will get you on this page. And on this page, then we will do set. This is the last warning that I can still go back and edit this design. This is kind of the point that your dough is going to be turned into a cake. So uh, it tells in here that it's going to be uh, leaving in here to my design center area and it will continue to go to embroidery edit screen. So if I click OK, I'm now in an embroidery screen. So it's, it's embroidery design like any embroidery design. I still have the same options to resize it in here, move it, rotate, uh, mirror image, all those like any, any design. And if you want, wanted to embroider, I will just click embroidery and I would be ready to embroider. Well, I'm not going to embroider that this time. I'm going to just go and hit the house key. And yes, I'm going to cancel that one. Go back into the home, home page. So well, that was all kinds of tools on our lines. Then we have another group of tools that we have on the regions or areas. Manuals, they always call it a region, but it's like an area that we can put fills. So we have three different options for all the uh, filling in a closed region or area with, uh, of the artwork. It has to be closed if we want to use that bucket to pour the paint in. So those three types of options we have, sounds like not much, but really we have sub options. We can have it a solidly standard fill that will be just solid fill all the whole area. We can also have pretty decorative fills and that's where we have lots of different options in there. But the main group, they're all grouped as a decorative fills. And then we have a third option as a stippling. Again, the same as colors, we can select the, um, the other lines, we can also select the colors. And we also have a paintbrush in there. The paintbrush in here would allow me to just to manually kind of fill in here. It's like you take a paintbrush and you paint an area. It'll, it's an other way to apply a fill, much slower. So I normally want to have a, a just a line area that has, I have, a closed area, and then I would use the pocket to pour the paint on. But we do have the paint press in here also. How do we access all our tools in here, the colors and those tools, and they are uh, is through the properties. This time it is the region properties, not the line properties. Same kind of a pattern as we had with the lines, but this time it will take us on to a little bit different screen. On the Solaris and Lumine, I can also click here on this button that has the showing the fill and the color. The default fill is a solid fill and that the color is red. That just that they had to have something to start with. So let me go to the next page. So when I select that region property button, a big pixel like this will appear. Again, depending on the machine, they may show a little bit different in here. So again, Solaris and Lumine. We have two options to click it. On some of the machines, the pixel will look like this. Solaris and Luminate will look like this. Very similar. Same colors, just a different order. And then the same fill types in here, exactly same. Only difference in here is the size and the paint press. The same way as we had with the eraser key, we, we can select the style of the paint press and the size of it. So Lumine and Solaris, we just have a little bit more sizes. On all others, we have three sizes and we all have two shapes. That is how we would select the styles in here and the colors. Well, what we have in there, and here's the, again the size about the brush styles in here. On those ones, the first one in there was the standard fill, stipple fill, decorative fill. And if I go back, we do also have a paint remover, meaning no fill. If you had applied color on some area that it was maybe a while ago and you decided, oh, I don't really need any fill on that one, and it's too late to really do undo, 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 because you may be done so many other steps, you don't have to all undo all the way until that. You can just select a no fill and apply that. It's like a paint remover, kind of a magic pattern. So it really is the fourth fill in there. Well, the exercise what I want to do, so I want to make sure, again, we have blank screen and we're going to use that same shape. 
So now you know why I told uh, to, to do exactly as this exercise is, because there's a reason for this shape. Uh, it just uh, saves us recreating this, but also gives us an exercise to uh, finding something from the memory. So touch the retrieve button, which is uh, that a loop pocket with the arrow coming out of it. After you click that one, your machine will ask, where did you save it? And then you just select whether it was machine's memory or the memory stick. Select that one. If it was a memory stick, remember you had to touch the B pocket to find it. And the last saved item will be shown on the first in the, in the list. So select that one, that's OK. And it will open up in, on your screen. Whatever was saved last time in there, that is the one that appears. So now we want to apply some fills. Even though we created this as a line image, because these are solid lines in here, uh, close shapes, I can add some fills inside there. So first one, I'd like to add a pretty fill in the center. So go ahead and touch the region property menu. Let me go back, which was the property pattern in here. One of those ones, I can make a couple options. And then the other uh, the display opens and select this last one. And when you click this one, on other picture appears. There's an image and it says select. That's the select. And on other menu opens. Now, depending on your machine, if you have a Destiny 2 or Dream Machine 2, you have 10 built in decorative fields. If you have the upgrade kit on your Destiny 2 or Dream Machine 2, you'll get five more fields, total of 15. Stelle, Altair, Meridian, they have all those 15 fields already. Solaris and Lumine have 30. And I needed to add in here, if you get the upgrade kit one, you get six more fields. So you might have also 36 fields then. If you have the 10 needle embroidery machine with the uh, IQ Design or My Design Center capability, that will have the 10 built-in fields, and there is not, at least of yet, any upgrades to add more. So we get those 10. So now I let you be creative. You can pick whichever one you like. So scroll down those uh, fields and select the one you like, and that's OK. So this fill, I can hear I uh, click the select, select it to fill, and OK. So it is shown in there, whether it is a machine uh, like this one that will see the fill up on this area. And your paintbrush is most likely selected. So if I now touch the screen, all I get is a dot. If you did that one, click to undo. We don't want to be using the paintbrush to fill it. We have much easier tool. We need to put that pretty paint that we have it in here into the a uh, little cup or bucket or whatever we want to pick, uh, want to call that one. We'll put it on this one. Make sure you put it on the one beside the paintbrush, not the one above, because these were line tools. We are now using the region tools. That's this one. And then click in here on the middle of that, somewhere inside the center. And that color and the stitch style is applied. It's just a simple, don't worry about the shape and sizes as of yet. It's just a simple that that's it's where it's going to go. So now let's ap apply some other fills. Go ahead and touch the region key again. Select the solid fill, which is a standard fill, the first option, and some other color. I picked up a little pur purple on mine. And then touch OK. Make sure that your uh, bucket is uh, selected in here and apply the colors between the most outer two lines, skip one section, and then apply the color here. There's a reason I want to have those two sections. They will come up in here shortly. So we want to have two areas. If you fill something else, click undo and then redo again. So we should have an image that looks something like this. Well, we have one more still, uh, fill style, which is uh, the uh, stipple fill. So on that one, if I go back in here, if I just apply the stipple fill on the outside in here by selecting the region tool, clicking the, uh, uh, the stipple and then applying, it will fill the whole re uh, remaining workspace. Even though we had put the 9.5 by 9.5 uh, hoop size as a reference, 
as I said earlier, it is not it's not a solid boundary, it's just a visual. So if I want to make sure that that design would fit into the nine and a half by nine and a half hoop, I need to give it another boundary. I could select a box among other basic shapes and then make it that size. But we have some more options that we uh, have a shortcut for that. So in that case, go ahead and touch the stamp key, the place that we were able to select the different shapes. And I mentioned earlier that there are a couple of patterns I will come back later. So now it's later for the one of the patterns. <clears throat> um, so if you select the very last one, that will open up all the hoops you have available for your machine. Again, if you have your machine in millimeters, these will show in millimeters. If your machine is in inches, they will show in inches. And we can change that on that uh, settings key on the top row in there. If you have it in inches, you would uh, select the hoop size is nine and a half by nine and a half. If your machine was in millimeters, uh, then it is 240 millimeters type times 240 millimeters. Select that one and that's okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, now that we have applied that shape, it actually is not going to stitch it. The outline is going to be as a non stitch, it's just a boundary. So this time now, click the, uh, the button in here for the, uh, for the little picker, and then click between our hoop and then this shape, and this area will get filled with a stipple stitch. And no, this is not gonna be how it's gonna stitch it out yet. It's just a simple of a stipple that that's where it's gonna go. The stipple on this machine is beautiful. It's not gonna be this like this one. It's just a symbol. So now that we have applied all our fill styles, I, if I want it, I could save it again um, in this exercise, I, because I'm not going to sew this out anyway, it's just an exercise. I just went ahead and touched the next, because we have finished all our editing, so then we can touch next on the bottom right corner. And when we select that one, we, uh, the Solaris and Luminaire, they will already digitize. It takes a little while, it kind of shows a little kind of a weight symbol in there and it will digitize it. All other machines, you still see the same kind of image as before. And if you want to see exactly how it would look like at this point, you'd have to touch preview and then you would see it. If you touch the preview and you want to change this once you need to touch the cancel to come or return to come back on the, on the editing screen, screen in here. So what we can do in here now, after we have uh, select, uh, uh, gone to the next, select the decorative fill. It might be already the one that is there as a default selected. We can now change the size of these fill patterns. We can change the angle and we can change also the uh, if, whether we want to have an outline or not. If you click the size, it says 100% as a default. We can make the fill from anywhere from 50% to up to 200. This is fairly small area. So if I left it 100%, you may not see too much of a fill on that small area. So you may want to reduce the size a little bit. So maybe 75 or even 50%. It just makes the design denser. And if you want to then uh, use that setting, set or Luminaire and Solaris, you touch OK. You can also change the angle of it. Some patterns, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, but certain patterns, it changes the look entirely. So that allows me to also kind of uh, rotate the, uh, the pattern also. The outline, depending on the machine, some of the ones it will be default on. So Lars and Luminaire with the latest upgrade update, uh, it will be all, already turned off. What that would do is it will do a straight stitch around on this fill. Depending on what I want to do, sometimes I may want to have a solid straight line around, sometimes I don't. So again, some machines it's a default is on, some machines default is off, but you can turn it on and off there. And then whenever you're happy with it, you'll touch either set or OK, depending on the, on the stitches. If you have a Solaris and Lumine, there are a couple additional options, and I will be showing that on a live video. 
Well, then we will have also other, uh, some settings in here for the solid fills. So if we touch the arrow keys, I will get onto my next solid fill. And only one might be highlighted. Well, I can have each of these fills to be different style of fills. But if I wanted to change them together, we have another pattern in here, a little chain link. That's the reason I want to have two the same in this exercise that we can use this chain link pattern to see what it does. So if I don't have this selected, I can change my settings individually. If I select a chain link, it will change all the fill stitches that I have on this design. I can change them all sim simultaneously. So I can go now ahead on this one. I can change the, uh, the angle on the stitches. If I did touch the auto pattern, it'll give me option to change it manually. Automatically, it'll do the fill stitch on 45 degree angle, which is really, if you have a, a woven fabric and you have hooped it straight, will be like that bias direction. So that's very common on embroidery designs. But if you for some reason want to change your stitch angle to be 90 degrees or zero degrees, you can change it touching the manual and then changing the angle. Most times I left mine out of, but you can, do, you can change it also. Then we have the percentage, which is the same as with the satin stitch, the density. We can go from 90 degrees to 110, 90% to 110%. Then we have pull compensation. Most times the 0.3 millimeters is just perfect. It is kind of industry standard. Because threads always pull, no matter how well we have it digitized, there's always a little pull when we change the direction, like in here the 45 degrees. So what pull compensation mean, means is uh, any time when the direction changes, there will be a little bit of an overshoot. And the overshoot is 0 0.3 millimeters. So it kind of goes over a little bit and over the other way. That way is because the threads pull a bit, if I had an outline, it will be lined up perfectly. We can adjust that if needed, but most cases the default seem to be working pretty good, uh, assuming that you have stabilized your fabric properly. Last one in here is underlay or understitching. As a default, it is off. This is a fairly small area. We might be okay to have it off. Especially if you have a larger area you fill in with stitches, you definitely want to put, turn this one on. It'll show those underlay stitches, which anchors the stabilizer and fabric together, and then your fill stitches on top of, top of it will be less buckery and pulling. So that is the options in here for the fill stitches. Then we have one more. So if I click the selection key, you may have to click it a couple times. Or I can even select on the screen in here the stipple fill. And on that one, we have options on the stitch length and the spacing, and also how far we want to have these stipple stitches to be from the edges. So those can be changed. Little tip in here that if you make the spacing very, very small, don't make your stitch length long because it looks very much like a jackety line otherwise. So kind of a keep it that in mind. If you use heavier thread, two millimeter stitch length might be too short. So I would maybe go to two and a half or three and maybe make my space in a little bit further apart. Again, whichever this way you want to have that one. Again, after you change them, just either that set or OK. So now we have told the machine all of those uh, um, parameters that I want to have these fill stitches to be. If I click the select button again, now I start seeing the lines in there, because whatever stage I saved is my, my artwork, those were the stitch styles that were applied. So this, they would be digitized also. If I don't want those lines to be stitched, of course I would skip those ones, because the way the machine digitizes them, even though the lines were there before the fills, it will always do the fills first and the lines on top of it, because if we do the lines first, and the fills on top, that would make those uh, lines disappear under the fill. So of course, if I had turned this into stitches with the lines, and I don't wanna sew those ones, I can always stop stitching those ones. But if I wanted to um, remove those lines, I could then touch return in here and go back 
onto the line properties, select the no sew line and apply the no sew on all of these five lines, and then you would it wouldn't even attempt to digitize. So two options. But Anita, when you're happy with all that one, go ahead and then touch the a preview on uh, on the machines that you had the preview button, and then OK. Because if you didn't save it, it will kind of remind you that you haven't changed the changes that were done on the stitch sizes. If you wanted to save that one also, we still have an option to save it in here too. If you have a Solaris or Lumine, your preview window is not there. It's already automatically on the preview screen on whenever we were changing the settings. So all the machines, we should have a button that says set in the bottom. And let me kind of go back in here. So we have a set. So this is the time that you can, when you touch the set, this is again a reminder for the last uh, time that I can edit this design as say artwork. Minute I touch OK, it's going to be in two stitches. My dough has been turned into a cake again. In this image, see we, can, we see still the satin stitches. So see how it is the last one. So we'll have the uh, stipple stitches, the fill stitches, and then the uh, those pretty fills. And the last one was in here, the uh, stitches in here. This, in this example, we had not turned off those ones. Let me go back one more pattern in here. If you have a Solaris or Lumine, on those decorative fields, we had a couple extra things. So um, uh, uh, we'll have also random shift and things. I'll show a little bit more about those on my live thing in here on my machine. So that was this was about. So now that we have that set, OK, it has turned uh, into embroidery design. This is the warning that you will always get after you touch that set. In here, it says converted to embroidery pattern and IQ designer or my design center will be exited. This is my last point of return. If I'm all happy with it and I click OK, it'll be turned into an embroidery design. And it is an embroidery editing page, which I can still do my normal edits as any other embroidery design. So that was how we can turn into uh, uh, artwork, into stitches. Uh, we can have it lines, we can have it fills. So that was just a little exercise on that one. I'll go back into my design center or IQ designer area. So what if I wanted to use some of the fills in that one? Because all I did was I was using the line tools in here with the, those built-in shapes. Well, instead of me recreating this design, I'm going to just get it from the memory that we saved it. So depending on a machine, some of the ones you will have a, uh, a little pocket that has an arrow going in for the saving it, an arrow coming out when you are taking out of the memory. On the Dream Machine and uh, Destiny, that th and those will be side by side. Solaris and Lumine, the retrieve button is on the top. So it does exactly the same thing. It's just the button is in a different location. So when I click this in here, it will show me the things that I have saved in here on my machine. These are not embroidery designs. These are just those uh, artwork designs that I have been saving. If I had saved it in a memory stick, I would click the memory stick. And then you would see a B pocket because if you so, uh, save it in any other external devices uh, in here, it will create a B pocket on that memory stick, and that's where those designs would go. But in the mem machine's memory, they will show right up here. The last saved will be the first one on here available. So I will select that one. Also, if I don't want it anymore, this is a place I can delete it. Lots of times I save multiple things in there. Like for instance, here's something I've been doing that I don't really need anymore. I can just select it and delete. And it'll ask me if I, uh, if, if I really wanted to do that. I said, yeah, I don't really need that anymore. So I'm gonna go and select this one and I'm gonna use it. So I will click okay. So now I have that shape back in here so I can play with it more. So this time, I would, what I would like to do is, I'd like to fill this ones up a bit. So this group in here, we have all our uh, line tools. The second group are all our fill tools. So on the fill tools in here, uh, we have the properties key. Again, I can uh, click in here on the little 
a notepad looking thing or then just a symbol where the pro uh, properties is. Uh, the default is a solid fill. Then the next one in here would be a, st a stippling stitch. And then we also have some really fancy fills in here also. When I click here, another window opens. So I had to click the select to see those pretty fills. And these pretty fills uh, depends on how what machine it is. You can have either 10, 15, 30 or 36. I have in here the luminaire with the upgrade. So I have 36 fills. So I'm just going to pick one pretty fill in here and click OK. I can also change the color if I need it. I just go for OK this time. So at the moment I have a paintbrush selected. Well, if I now touch in here anywhere in the screen, I will get just a dot. That's my paintbrush. Or if I draw a line, I will get just a line. So I could fill an area with the paintbrush. But that is a very tedious thing to do. So I will do undo and undo on those ones. I can change the size of the paintbrush if I click the properties key. Uh, depending on the machine, some of the ones we have three options. This one I can have it kind of really sliding scale on the size I want it. And I can also select if I want to have a square or a circle paintbrush. But I'm not using that one. I'd rather pour the paint in. You had to kind of think like you were just back from the hardware shop and you have a can of red paint in the trunk of your car. You need to put it in a bucket and you need to pour it in. So it doesn't go automatically. I had to pour it in. As long as my design or my frame in here, I'm putting the shape in, in here is solid. We don't have a hole on it. It will just fill it in here. If there was a hole, it will leak onto the next boundary. So we were okay this time. Well, then I'd like to use some of the other fills in here. So I'm going to go back to the properties. This time I'm going to pick up the solid fill. And I will select purple color this time. You see it's in here on, uh, on our trunk of the car. We put it into our uh, paint can. And now I'm going to click those two areas. And there's a reason why I wanted to have two areas with the same fill. Well, we have one more fill in here. I'm going to go and pick up the stippling stitch and maybe I'll do a blue color this time. So now again, it's, we see the stippling stitch in blue color and we have the paint can of, of, uh, selected. If I go now outside in here, uh oh, the whole thing turned into a stippling. Well, I had only selected the frame in here, but remember, this is not a boundary. It's just a visual. So I'm going to undo. So if I wanted to have my fill to be only on this area of the hoop I was planning to use, I better give me another boundary. I have a couple ways to do it. I could draw a box in here, which is very tedious. I could select a shape in here. We have a, a boxes in here. I could select one, resize it. Yep, that's another option. But we have a couple more patterns I was going to tell later. So here's one, one of them coming. There's a picture of a hoop. So I can pick up all of those hoops that I have. And I was using this 200 by 200, uh, 240 by 240 millimeter hoop. So when I click this one, it gives me the boundary for that hoop. So it will fit onto my nine and a half by nine and a half hoop. So now if I select my bucket in here and click there, it only fills up to that boundary. So if I now wanted to save this, I could again save it, but I'm not going to really reuse this again. It's just an exercise. I'm going to go ahead and click next. And again, uh, Solaris and Luminaire will digitize it. And I see exactly what I get. Um, because I picked up the design that had already lines on it, those lines will show up in here also. I had saved this design with all those decorative slides. If I then don't want those lines anymore, I can still go back and edit those ones. So a couple of ways to edit. Um, I could go on, let me see if I click in here on the buttons in here. Let me just go a little bit further in here. So see, I can, uh, I can uh, select those ones right away here and I would click it in here and I can change to another kind of line style also. But what if I don't want to show them at all? Then I had to go one more step back. Because one of the line options 
is also no sew. So it's just a boundary, but it doesn't stitch it out. And if I select that one, everything creates, gets grayed out. I click OK. It's now pencil. Well, if I now draw, I have a line that doesn't sew. Well, I don't really want that one. I want to have now just to change those lines to no sew. So I will put it on my paint can and I will touch each of those lines. Sometimes it's kind of hard to get on certain areas. We have also in here a zoom tool. If I click the zoom, I can go uh, some machines up to 800%. On the Solaris and Lumine, I can even uh, zoom in up to 1600. I made the zoom in here on the 200, so I, I still see everything on the screen. So now I can click each one of those lines and they kind of turn light gray color. And then when I go next, and it let it digitize, I don't have any of the lines in here. All I have are the fills. So each of these fills, I can change the settings. So my uh, stipple stitch, the default stitch length in here is two millimeters. And the spacing between is a little bit less than quarter inch. And the distance from the edges in here is just a tiny little bit, 0.2 millimeters. Well, I can change these ones. Maybe I want to have much, much bigger meandering rather than a stippling. And it will show me how it looks like. Um, then on my other fills, now I have fills in here that are the solid fills. And we had two of them. I can change each one of those individually. Now I have the inside one and that's the outside. But if I wanted these two to be exactly the same settings, I can also do them in here together. That's the reason I had uh, chosen those two to be the same colors, so or the same fill types. So I'm going to select the chain link. So both of these ones are now selected. There's a little red box around on both of those. On the fills, I can change the direction, how I want to have those uh, stitches, the fill stitches sewn. Default is 45 degree angle. If I click the manual, I can even change that one on if I want them have to have to be going up and down or whatever direction I want them to have going. I leave it an auto this time. I can also change the density, the same as our satin stitches, down 10%, up 10%. And then we have pull compensation. This is digitizing tools because this is a digitizing software. So I can now also adjust the pull compensation if I uh, would see that on the places that it will change the direction in here, it will be pulling uh, away from the, um, if, especially if I have a line in there. Most times you can leave this one as it is because that is kind of industry standard. If your fabric stabilized properly, it should be okay. But it isn't available for us also. Um, then we have one more in here is under sewing, which is the underlay stitches. The, oh, the, and the underlay stitches in here would, uh, I can, uh, the default is off, but I can turn it on also. If it's a very small area, I don't really need it, but I may want to have it on this case. So I can adjust all of those settings in here for the fill stitches. And then we have one more, the center one in here. Uh, uh, also, so let me use those arrow keys to kind of arrow them. There we go. So the, uh, the center one, we use the fancy fill. So on this one, all, it didn't matter which fill I used. We have the same options. So the default size, which is the pattern size here, is it says 100%. That's a small area, so I don't really see too much of it. So I'm going to go down. I can go down to 50% or I can go up to 200 So because it was a small area, I want to make it quite a bit denser, so I see more the pattern. Because it takes longer time to stitch also. And I can change the angle, the direction, how this goes. Well, this one doesn't really change too much, but some of the patterns, it will totally, totally change the look of it. And this one in here, depending on the machine, some of the ones it says on, and it's outlined. Uh, what that means that, uh, can let me zoom in a bit. Uh, this outline in here, when it's turned off, they are kind of a, looks like those fills are stopped. If I turn it on and then close, let it digitize, it will now show an out solid outline in here. 
Uh, depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I want to have the outline and sometimes I don't. So the most machines, it re default is on. The Solaris and Luminaire with the latest update, it is uh, the default is off. But we can always change it. The next couple ones in here are only available in the Solaris and Luminaire. We can also random shift. So if I put up to three, that's the largest number, what it does, it skews the design a little bit. So I can kind of twist this design a bit. Maybe not the best choice for this, but some designs it's really, really cool. Um, I can leave it there at the moment. The next one in here is I can position the, uh, the design, the center. Instead of having it making this design from center out, I can shift it vertically and horizontally. So I just leave them default at the moment in here. My machine has one more selection because I also have the upgrade kit one here. Uh, so this will, you will only get with the upgrade kit one uh, for the Solaris and Luminaire. Uh, this one is a thickness. The default in here is that it will stitch cover back and forth a little bit, about three to four times. If I want to have a bit lighter feel, I will click this one and now it will just go one to two times. Reason which is like three to four or one to two is it just depends on uh, what, the de uh, what the design is because it is still continu continuous design. <coughs> so now that I'm happy with my design, I could still save it in here with all my settings. But if I just go set, it will warn me that this is my last point of return. My dough is going to turn into a cake. So I will click in here, OK, and it's ready to embroider, the same as before. Well, here's a list of some tips for success from the Babylock Educators. And I wanted to use the list because it was a very, very good list. So just little tips in here when you are designing something on your uh, My Design Center IQ Designer area. For ease or accuracy, we, it'll be a little bit easier if you use a mouse or the stylus uh, on the, in the screen because finger is kind of a, a little bit too big for more precise work. Uh, so that's just a little helpful tool. And then as a reminder, um, we on several machines, we can also save the artwork and the embroidery designs onto the SD cards if you happen to have those memory devices. And then I kind of highlighted some of my favorite ones. One of the ones in here, uh, it's a general digitizing rule. No matter whether I was in, uh, digitizing in broader software or in a machine, the best results resize your artwork first before turning it into stitches. We can change the size already on a stitch file. We can, um, we can enlarge in a embroidery machine up to 200% or go down to 60% when it recalculates the stitches. So we still have a lot of resizing options in the embroidery stitch file. But best, best results are always to start approximately the size that you want to have it on your artwork. So resize the artwork before you turn it into stitches. Just a good rule, uh, rule of thumb for no matter which way you do digitizing. And other things that will help on really on working on precisely on things, we have the zoom function. We can uh, zoom it up 400 or 800 percent with the Solaris and Luminaire. We can even zoom in up to 1600 percent. So really is they're going to zoom in to get access on the very precise editing. Well, we have the eyedropper tool. Um, I may show this one as a little demonstration on my machine. But what this allows to do is that uh, I can assign colors from the existing design. So I can kind of uh, uh, select a color from another area and attach the little eyedropper, and then I can apply to another area, the same stitch style and same color. And then, as I mentioned many times, save, save, save. It's always a good idea to save your artwork several times, especially with the complicated design, because sometimes you may have to go back, you realize you missed some steps. So instead of starting all over from the beginning, you may be able to go some of the um, intermediate steps. Save in this machine is always more like save as, meaning it will save a new copy every time you touch the save button. You can always delete the extra ones that, that we don't use. Then 
this is a great tool from uh, the great tip from one of the educators looking for large letters well microsoft words we have lots of fonts in our computer so you could create a large letter enlarge it uh, in a font you like print it out scan it in the machine and use that for your lettering and uh, we can also use some of those large letters that we have built in the machine and on our machine club in here recently we were doing some uh, using the shapes of those last built-in letters also well the artwork that we save as a reminder as i mentioned earlier the artwork will have extension pm9 10 little machines to format is pm8 again there is no software in your computer that can read that file only the machine understands it okay if you can't draw like that's me uh, we can use those 90 built-in shapes and you can take pieces out of them you can re uh, resize them combine them kind of create all kinds of shapes even we only have 90, sa 90 shapes we can still do a lot with those ones then Another look, good tip is like we had a fairly short, a very fairly small area for the decorative fills in the center of our design. So that's important to audition those decorative fills. That's when that preview function becomes handy. Uh, because if I have a really large fill style in there and a small area, I may only get a few stitches. So again, good idea to change the size and the angle on some of those smaller areas. So audition your uh, decorative fills. But then other cool thing is, even though if you say I only have 10 or 15 fills on my machine, you get totally different looks when you layer them. You could put the multiple layers of stippling or multiple layers of uh, uh, on the different uh, decorative fills. Sometimes I put in two layers of decorative fills and rotate in the second one, 90 degrees. Uh, that will give you totally different kinds of fills. So we, even though we only have uh, either 10 or 15 or 30 or 36 fills, we still have more options in there. Other good source for the, um, for the designs or the artwork is other coloring book pages. Just a tip in here is that you may want to make sure that you have clean artwork with well-defined lines. If your coloring book page was printed on very cheap paper, it has lots of little black dots, when you scan that one in, all of those black dots are turned into stitches also. We can still edit those ones with the eraser, but uh, will be less editing if you start with the clean artwork. Also, uh, you can download a lot of copyright free, free coloring book pages from the websites. And one of the places I use a lot is the Brother Creative Center, which is really the Brother's printer website. There are lots of coloring book pages in there, and I can just download those ones into um, as a PDF file, print them out, and scan them in the machine. Or I could also uh, do a little snippet and save it as a JPEG picture and put it in a memory stick on the machine. So lots of different options to get some of the uh, some of those artwork files that uh, are more than what we have in the machine. And of course, you can always draw things. You can scan a background on a fabric and trace trace with your pencil in there on the screen. So lots of tools. So have fun. Just a wee demo. Gonna go to my design center and I will go to the stamps pattern list and the uh, solid uh, the open <laughs> close shapes. Pick up a flower this selected so i'm just gonna move it up a little bit then i'll go back onto the stamp pattern list pick up the open shapes pick up a leaf and okay it is selected so i will rotate it 90 degrees move it down a little bit oops that would be kind of covering over so let me move it out and I'm going to select part of it. I'm going to use my selection key because I have the update upgrade in here on my Lumine. I have three additional options. This will allow me to select a box. This would allow me to select little points. So I can just do click in here the areas that I want. Anything that is inside the box would be selected. Uh, this one here allows me to do a uh, just a free hand draw in 
groin in here, the area that I want to select. This one in here would allow me to select the entire piece. This will select every piece that I have. Well, in this case, I'm going to do this tool and I'm going to just to use the little box around or the drawing around, select that little leaf and hit the little scissor button to delete it. I still have a little section in here that I couldn't get into it. So I'm going to zoom in about 400% and then I will just pan in here a little bit. So that is still something I need to delete. I'm going to select the eraser. As a default, it is a round eraser, a medium size, so I will just go and re delete part of it already. Still have a little bit more, so let me zoom in more. And now maybe I will have a little bit smaller eraser and even a little square. So I can get right in here. If I accidentally do too much, I will just undo and put it back in there. And I'm going to get that little piece out too. So very precisely I can edit. So now I have the one leaf taken out. I'm going to uh, select. This time I'm going to touch this uh, one selection tool. And select this piece. And skew this flower, uh, the stem beside the flower. I still left a little gap in there that they are not touching, so I can change these colors to be different. So if I touch the line tools, pick up a green color, and maybe a uh, pin stitch, and that's OK, puts the bucket, and apply the color for that outline. I can go also in here on the fills, maybe take a bit lighter one. I'm going to leave it solid fill at the moment. Put it in a pocket and apply those colors on the leaves. Then I'm going to add some more fills. Maybe I'll do a yellow center. My pocket is selected. Apply it in the middle. And finally I'm going to make a red flower. And apply that one onto some of these leaves. And then um, I'm going to... I'll uh, also change the outline. I'm going to go to line tools. Maybe I'll do a satin stitch, a little bit dark of yellow, put it in a bucket, apply there. And then on these other pieces, mm, let's do a, a candle wicking, a little bit darker red. And then uh, my bucket is selected and apply. So all of those have been now changed. And then I notice, oops, I missed one leaf. If I go in here and said, hmm, I can't remember which one of these greens it was. This is where the little eyedropper becomes handy. So at the moment, my paintbrush is in here selected. If I wanted to use the same fill as in here, I can just uh, um, activate my eyedropper. Click in here on this one leaf that I want to use the same fill, same color. And now that is put on my paint can. And here I will put it there and apply. So that just allows me to pick a color and a style in here from the design. So now if I go next and I see how that would look if it digitizes it. And that is how this design would look like if I sewed it out. So just a little simple demo on how to use the eyedropper and just to how to combine designs and edit them. Well, I have one pattern that I kept promising that I'm going to show you. So this is a little presentation that uh, came from the Brother Educators. So again, I want to give credit for the people who, um, where I got the presentation. Um, we had one more pattern in there on our uh, stamp about a section which had a picture of a flower. Well, this same flower appears also in our embroidery menu. So what this allows me to is, is to get on other shape uh, by using an existing embroidery design. So in this example, I have an image on the screen that uh, we are on an embroidery editing screen. Just one of the built-in designs on a dream machine. 
And when I click the edit button, again, doesn't matter what design you have. When you click this, this little flower, so some of the machines, it's even a different color, but if, no matter what machine you have, it's also a pixel of a flower. Click that one. This creates an outline around it. So the image like this appears. So you can just see how it traces around the design. This is artwork. And we have only options we have here is I can change the distance. If I want this to be further out, I can even have a negative distance a bit further in. So that will allow me to change how far. If you have really intricate shapes, you may want to have it further out. And then the only thing we can do in here is if you hit cancel, nothing happened. I didn't do a thing. If I touch this button on the screen, you may have a different things. Baby lock says IQ on some machines. Some of the ones may say memory. But this location, bottom right corner, whatever button you have in there, that will save the outline in my design center IQ designer area. That's all it does. So this in here traced it, that will save it. And when I click this pattern, I'll get a little warning that it says recall for my design center stamp pattern list or IQ designer st uh, stamp pattern list. And it even tells you that is where we'll find it. All we can do in here is touch OK and it will get me back onto the original screen here. So now if I go onto my design center IQ designer area and touch this button where we have the stamp pattern list, the window opens and that is one of those patterns that I'm, I haven't told yet. We have the same flower here. Go ahead and click that one. It shows me the last number of saved outlines. Depending on a machine, you may have six outlines, up, up to six outlines. A Solaris and Luminaire, it saves up to 30 outlines. They will get automatically overwritten when you, uh, when you get more. Like in here, the next one, this last koi piece in here would disappear and the new one comes in here. So it will just automatically replenish. We can't delete these ones in the machine. However, if you want to keep one, you could open it up and save it. So this time I just want to use it. So click this and OK. And that outline shows up in here on the screen. So this will allow me to add a fill around it. So I didn't have to manually change uh, a trace around my brewery design. I had very accurate uh, tracing done by the machine. So now I would go on the fill patterns, the pro uh, fill properties, pick up the fill I want, put it on my uh, bucket touch in here and that fill is applied outside my design. So I wouldn't be doing the fill stitches on top of it. So that is uh, uh, kind of how we can do uh, uh, we, we can do that filling. And here's uh, then if you wanted to double check to make sure it all gets in the right spot because you may have embroidered this design before and then you want to add your padding and add your fill. So when you hook this one you could even scan it uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, and I'm uh, going to just scan in here also. And then you can recall the shape, put it on over so we are exactly on the right spot that you have your uh, uh, your design. So that's kind of like if you had rehooped it between. Uh, so uh, that way we'll get it in the right spot and then apply the fill. So that is just another kind of more precise on the case that you had unhooked your design and wanted to um, then apply it after. I'll do a little demos maybe about this later. Well, then we have one more option in here that is really nothing to do with our uh, my design center IQ designer. We have automatic stipple in the machines. It's so cool. Any design that I have, and I had to have embroidery design on the screen, but any design that I have, I can have an instant stipple. So here I have a letter K. When I open the edit window, there's a pattern that looks like a little flower with some st stitches around it. When I click this one, it'll fill in here around the design with stipple. As a default, it'll fill your in uh, the in entire rest of your embroidery area. We can select our hoop size in here. So if I want to have the 9.5 by 9.5 hoop, I will select that one and then it will fit uh, right inside on this. 
I can also change the distance, like very intricate. I may not want to have my stipple to go all the way there. So I can even change the distance on where I want to have my stipple to start. And then I can change also my uh, size of my stipple. So if I want to see how that would look like, I click Preview on the Dream Machine Destiny Stelle Altel Meridian and Multiniddle. Uh, Solaris and Lumine automatically already shows you that, so we don't have the preview window. So it will show how it would look like. And you can still go and edit if you don't like it. Solaris and Lumine, we also have an echo quilting. So if you don't want to have a stipple, there's an other button on the top, you can click that one and then we'll create echo quilting where you have the spacing, how far the lines are from each other, and all these same options. So echo quilting is another cool little tip that it will take a longer time for the machine to digitize an echo quilting than a, a stipple stitches. What I normally do, I set my hoop size and my distance and my spacing already as a stipple, and then I turn it into echo quilting. It's just a bit faster. That's the, how, what I learned in the past in here. So that is a really cool one that we can add out of uh, instant stipple or automatic stipple or echo quilting on some of the machines on any embroidery design we have on the screen. And here is some of the course examples on that one. So that is all uh, what I have in here now. And uh, hopefully you have lots of fun playing with your My Design Center IQ Designer area. Thank you. Bye.